Hey guys, how's it going? We are at one of our local town-wide yard sales, but the weather is uh, was supposed to be rained out today. They still had it, but there was not that much out there. A lot of slim pickings, but I grabbed a couple of pieces, and uh, we'll go over them and and we see if we can get them to go. One being an AC unit, not damage it getting it out, but uh, it looks fairly new. You usually can tell by looking at the fins up inside how much crap is inside them and I would say it does not have much use at all I think they had three of them there they were 60 60 and I think there was a large one for like 120 or something um, I offer 40 for one of the smaller units because that season is coming very shortly and they said yes so I grabbed it I didn't even plug it in I would suspect that it works but uh, in the very beginning of going yard sailing, you want to make sure you get in and out as fast as possible because nothing worse than the next yard sale you go to is the Honda uh, self-propelled mower going down the driveway into somebody else's truck, which actually did happen. <laughs> so uh, I missed that on that one, but uh, I also grabbed a rototiller for 40 bucks, five horse, front tine, not self-propelled or anything, but uh, she's uh, the lady was moving she uh, seems sentimental about it. Again, I did not run it. I don't know what we got. I figured we'll go have some fun. It has not been used in a year or two. The gas did not smell totally terrible, but it looks decent enough that uh, it should come back to life. Looks like it's been kind of left out in the weather or something though by all the crap that is on it. And it is missing the uh, drag bar that goes behind. There's a bar that you kind of uh, allows it to stick into the ground so as the tiller is trying to pull itself forward it gives you some resistance instead of you just trying to use the handlebars to stop it all the time that and i grabbed a push mower i do not believe it's self-propelled i don't think so no not self-propelled that was 10 bucks and uh, again he just uh sat not used that kind of thing and uh i think we'll give that a shot too i he, he said make, make me an offer it's a 10 bucks he said fine and then i looked at it further i started seeing some other issues like the cable and stuff is screwed up here so um i probably <laughs> he was to the point where he was going to give it away but uh, i may have probably should have thought twice about grabbing it because these are all done and working they're worth 50 bucks maybe so you got to watch how much you put into it and i already got 10 bucks into it if you buy a blade and some other parts you definitely surpass the value of what they are so let's get the uh AC out of the truck. We'll plug it in and we'll make sure she uh, does what it's supposed to do and then maybe we'll move on to these two machines. Let's go plug that guy in on the truck and see what we get. And AC is probably uh, between 150 200 bucks. I haven't looked this one up but 40 bucks is a lot better than 150 and I do need to buy one anyway. I don't know if that's gonna there you go. Oh, hi. My battery's at it. There's 62 there. I can barely read it. You're not going to be able to read it. 54. Let it run a minute. I'd say that's a win. Yeah, I'd say these guys definitely need a date with the pressure washer before we get into it. They look like uh, the kind of item you don't want to buy because they have patina on them. You want them because they look decent. So I think we gotta kind of get rid of some of the scuzz, make them a little bit more attractive and a little bit easier to work on too without all that crud on them. We go get them over by the pressure washer, we'll fire them up and uh, we'll get to getting.
It's probably been in, you know, 45 minutes. We ain't got a little bite to eat and kind of let them dry off a little bit. Which one do you want to start with first? Oh, wait. Alright, 70% of you are saying the tiller. Let's get the tiller up on the bench and uh, let's see what we got. I ended up having to get another camera, actually another two cameras, and went back with the Canon PowerShot uh, Elf 110 HS, I think it is. Air filter looks decent. We'll water that shot onto it. it looks really clean. Generally, ro uh, rototillers work about a half hour a year, and uh, don't see much in the way of where you usually suffer more from uh, sitting, which most of the stuff in my area seems to run into. Let's see what we got for oil. Yeah, so if you see anything different with this camera, whoops, anything different with this camera, give me a shout. Actually, it looks pretty good. You got a belt underneath there. And I, I do believe there's fuel sitting in it yet still. Mm, old, not terrible. I'd say, just because we're probably going to end up needing to do it anyway, let's go pop this air cleaner out of our way and get to that flow pole. See if it's going to need a, a little cleaning or a big cleaning. Yeah, the last one, two YouTubers sent me cameras. Actually, three if you go back, way back. And uh, the last one ended up was a Canon also, a different Canon. Uh, the picture was fine, but it ended up developing this weird uh, noise in the autofocus. It's how the clicking was, uh, not the last video, but the video before. So unfortunately, you don't realize that until after you do the video. That looks like it's probably a little varnishy fuel. Look out there too. That's, I should probably, does this have a fuel shut off? Does not. Let me get some uh, something to clamp the fuel line. All right, where were we? We want to clamp that guy off. That's a little on the brittle side too. So, yeah, it was making noise. And you ought to focus. Even if you're sitting still, it would just constantly be buzzing back and forth. It's going to need something to get up inside there. Come on now. Yeah, so I couldn't use that camera anymore. And it worked for like two videos, and all of a sudden it started doing that, which was unfortunate because it had a very good had a very good stereo capacity to it with this is mono and fuel is looking rather yellow yellow slash green you think we're gonna get we're gonna get a hammer there it goes not terrible And then another camera was mailed to me that had uh, good for high speed. It was a Casio. Uh, and I went to go set up to go use that one. But the problem was when I went to go put a memory chip in it, it will only recognize up to an 8 gig chip, which only gave me 18 minutes of record time. I usually run like a 64. Anything I tried running larger than that. It might take a 16, I'm not sure, but uh, I put a 32 in it wouldn't recognize. I put a uh... All right. a uh, 16. Uh, so I'm not sure. And uh, we can still use that for high speed, but uh, for our general filming, we are going back with the good old ELF 110HS. So let's uh... It's looking kind of varnishy in there. I may just go take it right off and go for it because it seems like if I don't, I end up paying for that. 
And you can kind of see all the crap in the holes there. Seems like it's growing moss. Let's get that fuel line off of there. Get that carb off and we'll let that soak up for a little bit. Sometimes in these carbs with that, they have that plastic, that plastic barb sticking out of them. If they don't want to go too easy, sometimes it's better cutting them. Let's see what we get though. Might go. What you can do is you cut them right here, cut it free from the barb, and then slice down the side of it, take it off, and then you can get a new piece of fuel line on it. There's nothing worse than ripping that sucker right off of there. We might go with that action. Let's go right about. And then you can kind of come back, grab it sideways. Use a blade too, but I don't know wire cutter. You can kind of grab it. And now, come okay, on. There we go. Sometimes have carbs. Carbs have a, uh, a linkage that has a bunch of different holes you can kind of go select. I usually like to take a scribe, you know, put a scribe mark next to the one that is uh, being used. If you try using a marker, the problem is when you go to clean the carb, the marker has a tendency to wash off. So now we just got to orientate that guy so we can get it. We can get this one handed. I just think it's easy trying to hold the camera and do this, don't you? <laughs> there I guess. And now we gotta get the spring. If I only had another hand. When you guys wanna grab that, please. There you go. At center, the emulsion tube's not going to come out of there, so we'll leave that alone. I'm more concerned with that stuff right there getting cleaned off. I'm going to try getting that seal off the bowl. I'm not too concerned about these. I'm probably going to leave them alone. But that guy will grow if you leave it in the cleaner or if you, if you hit it with carb cleaner. And there's the color of the fuel that came out of it. Not terrible, but not great. One other thing, this seal is kind of stuck on there pretty good. I started pulling at it one area it's free. Where was it? So if you just kind of grab and start tugging on it, what's going to happen is it's going to stretch out. There it is. So if you just grab this and start pulling on it, it'll be larger because you stretch it as it kind of comes off. So if you take something else and just kind of pry off of it, pry it off instead, you stand a much better chance of it maintaining its diameter. Because most of the stuff you can get away without having to buy a carb kit for it, unless it's terrible. There you go. That should stay. And into the parts washer. Ultrasonic cleaner. Just warming up yet. A lot of guys ask me every time what the machine is. The problem is I answer the I answer the same questions over and over again, so I don't want to keep putting them in this in the video. But uh I don't know how many quart it is, but I would say it's roughly uh, eleven inches by fourteen inches by 14 inches or 12 inches around there and let's shake it up and let that guy soak for i don't know 15 20 minutes you know that's clean when we go get the cover off of the belt and the pulleys and see what kind of shape they're in see if we have any issues Yeah, it actually looks really good. A little crap in, the, in there, but let's go see. And it's out. 
a hair noisy. And not bad. Not, not bad enough where I would want to go chase that. They're not always the most <clears throat> silent to begin with. Let's see if we can get that belt off. I believe the cover works as the guide for the belt. Let's go see. It's all good down in here. I think we'll be fine. Everything looks like I'm watching these shafts right here. I'm just looking to see if these guys are like wobbling out around. How's the other side look? It's pretty good. I don't see any broken tins, tines, tins, tin tines. I think we'll be happy with that. We'll clean off that belt, clean up that cover. I'll put that back together. So yes, yeah, so I'm back to the old faithful of cameras. That ain't right. That's gotta go like that. And it's not as good as some, but I don't want to get into the fancier cameras where I have to worry about what the camera is doing. I can focus more on what we're trying to do on the project instead of uh, are we in focus and sounds okay and boom mics and all that kind of stuff that's the other problem too a lot of these smaller cameras that you use don't have a port for a uh, external mic so you're kind of stuck with what's in the camera this one works pretty good for the fact that the the mic is in the top of the camera kind of top center so no matter what position you are around the camera it seems like it picks up the sound fairly well compared to when they're in the front of it. I'm talking from behind. I seem to have it. I seem to disappear, you know? And one more. What else you want to look at? I don't think he has much in the way of a gearbox. I don't know if he's got any fluids. It's probably just a chain that runs up and down to the front tine. So I think is on the inside of that. Yeah, I don't see any ports to do any kind of uh, lube. So it's fairly I'm trying to remember how to read these uh, numbers. It's the first two digits or the last two digits or the digits in the middle. It might be 06. Is the year. About 10 years old, 11 years, 12 years old. I think a positive of that. I may take some this for shits and giggles. I may throw some black paint on here while this is open and uh, clean that up a little. I uh, put a piece of wood underneath the front of it so that the lowest part of the fuel tank is where the fuel line is. Clean the jar out. Let's let that run and see what we get. We have to drain all of it. Yeah. It's looking like we're going to have to drain all of that. It is uh, definitely a strong cup of tea. I love how people tell you. Like last year it was used and serviced. I'll tell you right now. That gas is more than a year old. Just saying. Kind of like when a uh, gas owner is drinking. How many drinks they had and they tell you one or two that means six and one of the other common questions are what do you do with the old gas that had water in it too i don't know if you saw it yeah, you can see it on the bottom we have a, our town has a hazardous waste day it's actually like four towns together and i think it's two times a year it might be four times a year for on a saturday for four hours you can go bring you know old paints gas oils that kind of thing so i have an old boat gas tank a couple of old boat gas tanks and i put them in here and when i'm done i bring them to when they get filled i bring them to that that's how i get rid of it and i just got done this is the third cup and on the bottom that's what you see down there that's water and water is heavier than the fuel so it goes right down to the bottom and again that's what kind of usually stops the machine from running or running and then dying is uh, in the float ball the gas tank 
all the gas will run, all the water will run in the tank, down the fuel line, go to its lowest point because it's the heaviest of it all. And it just sits in the bottom of the float ball. And especially with power equipment, because the fact that the jets are so small in power equipment because it uses so little fuel, not like a, you know, uh, a larger car carburetor the jets are uh, holes are a little bit larger they could actually kind of suck it up if you cup your hand over it and choke it it'll draw it up once it's kind of in the float bowl it kind of stays there there's no other way to get it out of there unless you physically remove the bowl and uh, clean it out a lot of the old snow blowers have what was like a like a tickler on a bowl it's a little valve on the bottom you guys you could hit it'll help drain the float bowl out just because of the uh, the issues that happen in winter time so there's a prime example that this had to come apart and get cleaned because that would have came back and bit us. And let's see if we can kind of force out what's in there. I should probably lean it. Again, towards that spot. Let's see if that helps anymore. Might actually have it all. Little bit more some of the older tanks they're just a square tank there's nothing in it there's no baffles or anything inside of it unfortunately this is not the case this actually has a lip that probably goes down about that far inside the tank so it's not like you could take this tank flip it upside down and kind of drain it out you can't get it out of there it's kind of like a modern car where you now have you don't have the capacity to fill it to a certain level they want, to main, they want to maintain an airspace in the top of it. That's why it's designed like that. But to clean it, kind of a pain, because there's also some plastic baffles that are inside there. So when this thing's bouncing around, it doesn't uh, splash. You know, really ridiculous. So you're kind of a little at wit's end as far as uh, mopping up what's there. I usually try to leave it open, and I'll come back with a rag like this, sometimes even a big heavy screwdriver to get down inside there. You can kind of wipe the bottom of it up the best you can. Then I actually come back with an air gun and take the air gun, kind of shoot it around inside there. And it just kind of breaks it up into mist and it'll come out like a, again, a mist out of the top of it. And then hopefully you see that it's dry and then you can fill it back up. Idea. I'm gonna go see what that plug looks like. I don't expect it to be bad. I, again, these things get run so little, unless it was a rental or someone had a ridiculously large garden. This thing probably has five hours on it total. Watch me eat my words. It comes out with like cobwebs on it. I would say it looks a little like it was run a little on the rich side. Does this have a manual choke? I'm not sure. Sometimes uh, they start running crappy, people run them with the choke on a little bit. Yeah, it has a tendency to look like that. We'll clean that up on a wire wheel. We're gonna throw that back in. I don't see any wear on the actual electrode. And that's a little better. Down inside the electrode, I look underneath the microscope. Uh, I don't see anything. Microscope is a... Magnifying glass, that's, what that's the word we're looking for. Also, just the fact that if someone's trying to old, run old fuel through it, the plug will also do that. The plug wasn't really, really bad, but... I'll take care of it more there. Right? All right. I did forget to throw some black paint on there. So I'm going to do that. I'll go see if I have anything to kind of... All the carbs off. Yeah, let's go hit it with some uh, rattle clean, rattle can rustoleum. Semi. It's pretty. Good enough for me. Except for the fact I'm stuck on the hook. Good as used. And let's see how we made out. 
don't see what side was that on. That was on that side. Green's all gone. That's good. Now people also ask what's in there. It's just the uh, the chem dip cans for carburetor cleaner. I find that so far has been the best for me. Some guys say yeah, mineral spirits too. At some point uh, I'll let this settle down. I'll probably drain it out and get rid of the crud on the bottom. But they are. Let's see if there's one around here. That's what it is. Designed to clean carburetors, so I figured it would do good for cleaning carburetors. Blow that guy out. Again, you gotta watch out right with the needle. See this, you don't wanna blow air through this way, you wanna blow it through this way because you'll launch that sucker across the room. Aim it away from my coffee. Those guys. And I'm not going to bore you with the reassembly. Unless this is your first time here, it's pretty much see it on every video. I think you get the idea. Put all that back together. Let's see what we get. Another thing I just want to show is that putting that seal back on, you can see how it still has the capacity to hold itself in place without getting grown. Uh, someone's saying that you spray something back on them and it will shrink back up. But if you hit them with carb cleaner or something, they essentially just puff up and grow. Uh, worst case, I've, I've actually kind of cut them and, you know, squeezed them back into the same location and worked with that. But the next time you take the bowl off, it's a pain in the ass, especially if the carburetor is still on the machine, you can't hold it upside down. You know, you're trying to assemble it like that becomes very hard to uh, hold that up in place while you're putting the bowl up, so. I ended up taking a tank off for a couple of reasons, but I uh, just want to show one thing while it's off. So there's that fine spring that goes over the linkage rod, and its sole purpose, what that is there for, is if there gets to be any play in those holes, see what that plastic bushing is? Either side, if there gets to be any play inside those, it keeps it pulled to one side so that the, the rod has always got pressure against one side because what can happen is th this is the governor internal governor it's got feedback it, it tries to constantly maintain a certain rpm of the engine if you got it set for say 3000 rpm it wants to set to stay right at 3000 rpm no matter what the load is so internally it, it adjusts that it goes down too low allows you to have more throttle it goes down too fast it allows you to have less throttle anyway to keep it from hunting, which is, you know, the thing's revving and dying, revving and dying, not having an even condition. If they get rid of some of the play that is in that linkage, that um, that can cause that to happen. There's, there's many reasons that can cause that to happen, but one of them is having play in these bushings because it, it's just allowed to float back and forth without this arm even moving. So it just kind of dances around. That's what that is there for. And then to adjust your RPMs is kind of what you see on here. This tension spring, there's a throttle here. Let's see if we can show this. I am. There we go. So you can see. Oh, it's nice and crunchy. The throttle, how much it pulls on the governor, and it influences the governor. And it's important, depending on which hole that you pick over here is how much the RPMs is going to change. A lot of times you can bend the linkage and change the length of the spring too, but that's generally what that's for. And that one also is what that's for. And to shut it off, it just has a ground plug lug on here. And when you go all the way to stop, it grounds out on that little tab and kills it all together. So the fuel line was no good. That's why I took the tank off. It is... Just cracked in too many places when you go to, go to put that on there. So we're gonna change out the fuel line. And on the inside of the tank, so I can show you guys, get some light on there. You can see the baffles I'm talking about. And when I move the tank around, you can still see like water washing from one side to the other. And again, I went over by the door with a big air gun and just kind of kept purging air through it and it kind of came out as a mist. And now we look pretty decent. I don't see anything flowing through it now. 
Here you go, you can see the baffle holes that go up inside it. That's why you can't go get in there with a rag and clean it really well. And that's it, all back together. Should be ready to fire up. Just gotta put fuel in it. And uh, for fuel, I'm gonna go try, uh, I had a conversation a couple times, that um, most of the fuel around my area has alcohol in it, 10%. And it does wreak havoc on everything that we have, especially stuff that has uh, that sees a big temperature change between uh, you know winter and summer, and that the gas tanks vent in and vent out, and it causes a lot of water, like you just saw in the fuel. So this is a can two racing fuel. It's 110 octane. It's like nine bucks a gallon, but it's supposed to be able to. Uh, be like pretty much like old gas where it actually lasted a long time so i'm gonna use that sparingly in some stuff especially something that may sit for a long period of time we're gonna go run that so that's what's gonna go in it now and i do feel it probably wasn't running right looking by the exhaust and the ash or soot that's been coming out of it and the way the plug was i have a feeling that it was run probably with the choke partially on because it had some partial obstruction or the fuel was so bad it wasn't running right that they had to go run it with the choke partially on that's just a guess on my part hey just put gas in it the only thing i didn't do is check for spark but if it doesn't start then we'll worry about that i think we are good to go That a win. And we're doing our best to kill the weeds off over here against the fence, the plastic. But to, in front of it, we can kind of play with it and just kind of maybe put a bit of a load on it. You think one choke, took off a choke. How we make out ten dollar yard sale push mower. Alright, for this one I quickly looked at it at the yard sale. I don't you know when it's eight in the morning, you kinda want to get in and get out as fast as possible and not deal with how much time you're wasting. At each location, so because Again, like I said, you'll miss. It looks like it's got nothing in it, does it? All right. So, oil seems to be an issue. The gas tank is. Should get light in there. Completely dry, it looks like, which is good. Could be good, could be bad. Either that, or the fact that the carburetor is so bad that all the fuel peed out of it. I'm not that crazy about these carb setups for two reasons. One is the air cleaner. Uh, a lot of mowers get uh, stay outside and the air filter gets soaked with water. And this one is damp, but I did you know, hit it with the pressure washer, but I tried to steer away from that. Yeah, so that can be an issue and it causes it to run really rich. It kind of, it, it shields it somewhat away, but you can imagine this thing sitting out in someone's yard, you know, buried in snow. It does have a tendency to take out the filter. And I'm not that crazy about the primer bulbs set up. I'd rather just have a regular choke or an automatic choke. So, and underneath it, I quickly flipped it over. And I noticed when I spun it around, we use that for an eyeball, that you see where the blade lines up there. See where the blade lines up there. So either the blade is bent or the crankshaft is bent. Where the crankshaft is broken. Uh, if I didn't, if I would have seen that, I would have passed. I will quickly go look and see if I have one. But there's the issue there. I thought the blade was bent. That's what I get. That's what you get for Russian, see? 
sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I don't know, I'm gonna go a little bit further with it. We'll uh, maybe chase that down at, an, at another time if I don't have one and see if we can get it to run. See if it's even worth fixing that part of it. So. It's starting to look like to me somebody put it out for scrap. <laughs> Drain the oil and the gas out of it. And I paid 10 bucks for it. I should probably get that float ball off of there. See what that tells us. I even told a friend of mine, it was yard sale with me. I said, I should have left that one behind. So, hindsight, you know. It does have the bag, which is nice. They generally will fit any of the same era. But this is kind of a, a plain Jane, it's not self propelled. Ugh. This guy is junk. I'm sure I can get it to run, but here's the thing. This mower is probably worth all done. 50 bucks. My area, that's what they were. The gasket wasn't even in place. Somebody was in here before me. Yeah. Ran last year. <laughs> sure it did. I think this guy is uh, destined for parts unless I really feel the urge to uh, do a repair on this, but I think I'm going to pass after uh, now realizing what it needs. It's missing the knob for the handle up there. You see it flapping on one side. The cable is busted in two. I didn't see. Right there. The cable's busted. I could fix that with a piece of tubing over the top of it. Piece of uh, brake line. You slice it, put it over it, you crimp it. It'll hold it. But just all the stuff adding up. Uh, it's not worth putting 60 bucks into a $50 mower. So we may just leave this guy. Go out back for uh, three or four weeks. If we find another one for parts, if we throw the bagger or something on it, we will. And maybe steal some wheels and that kind of thing. Or it may come back, but I don't see that happening, judging by what I see. Hi right, guys, with that, I think I am going to shut it down. Again, you, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Just it's the nature of it. And uh, you know next time just to spend a, maybe another minute or two looking at it. But that's all right. Again, I, got I paid 10 bucks for it. Even like one little thing that you use from it. If you need to put a wheel on something else or the bag or even something like the gas cap that you need. It's already paid for itself in that one shot. So with that, I want to thank everybody for kind of hanging out and uh, doing some wrenching in the garage. We shall uh, do another one very shortly. More stuff's kind of coming out. It is summertime and all the stuff comes out of the sheds and garages and on the side of the road, that kind of thing. Little free piles that uh, make my channel have a bunch of content for this summer. And I just want to thank everybody again for the uh, stuff that they have sent, the cameras people have mailed me and ultrasonic cleaner and tools and whatnot. And just for, for supporting me. I definitely deeply appreciate everything you guys do. So with that, I will see you on the next one. Later. Figures if he doesn't move, I won't see him. There's 60,000 people watching you web it. Free pile, side of the road, shall we?